He said he'd be where the living waters flow. It's got to be the sump pump room, but the light is off. was meditating and the president said we're supposed to wear mask all the time and this is the only mask I've got. Seriously? Take that mask off right now. That's what my wife said this morning when she woke up. <sighs> hey quarantiners. How are you this evening? Well, just by way of a little bit of review, let me read the scripture we've been working on. It says in 1 Kings chapter 17 in verse 1, Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, surely there will be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. Now, last week we were talking about this guy, Elijah, and how he just kind of shows up out of nowhere. And we don't know anything about him except he was a Tishbite and he was living by the settlers of Gilead. And he just kind of burst on the scene and out of nowhere, and he comes to confront the culture that he was living in. And they had moved away, much like our culture has moved away, from the one true God and had turned to following after many idols. Now, remember, we asked the question last week, what gave this man that kind of courage to come in right up to the king, point his finger in his face and say, hey, there's not going to be any more rain till I say so. Well, Remember, our first point last week was that he said, or we said, that he was convinced of the reality of Jehovah. He really believed in God, and it affected the way he lived. Now, tonight we're going to look at the second secret that Elijah had. And I believe that God wants us to incorporate this principle into our lives. Elijah believed that he was a representative of the living God. You see, it's not just enough to believe in God. It's not just enough to say that, you know, I'm going to follow God. But you need to believe that you are the representative of God. And we see that here in our verse where Elijah says, Before whom I stand. You know, it always amazes me by the fact that God consistently performs the miracle of ministry through human personality. He uses us. He uses human beings, frail and broken as we might be, to accomplish his purpose. We are the personal representatives of the living God. And in the midst of a culture that is crying out for answers, I think that sometimes we stutter. You know, we kind of have the attitude, well, who am I and, and what can I do? I'm just this, or I'm a lay person, or I can't do this, or I, we, we focus on the negatives all the time. You see, for some reason, Christians have become uninvolved in giving the only answer to the question that the world is looking for. In the midst of all of this chaos, the world wants answers. They want to know what happens after death. Is there life after death? How do I know I'm going to heaven? All of these things are on people's minds nowadays. But for some reason, we Christians have become uninvolved of giving out that answer. And we have believed the lie of Satan, uh, who said, you're nobody. You can't do that. He tells us, who do you think you are? Or 
Maybe he says, you're a nobody. You're not a pastor. You don't have any Bible training. You never went away to college. What kind of answers can you give? What kind of hope can you present to people? Well, instead of listening to the lie of Satan, we need to understand, and this is the question that we need to ask. Instead of saying, who, me? We should be saying, what can I do? You know, Elisha wasn't the only believer in this time. There were 7,000 other prophets who were hiding out in a cave somewhere, unable to speak. But Elijah didn't join them. Elijah stepped forward and said, what can I do to reach my culture? And it is still true today as it was in Elijah's time that God is looking for one man or for one woman who will be his personal representative. The personal representative of God. And here we have an opportunity for us to help people who are blind to the glories of Jesus Christ and help them to see Christ in us and that we represent the one true God. Would you say... How, Pastor Dave, how can I be the personal representative of God? Well, let me share you something that I learned a long time ago. You know, we get caught up in, in all of this busyness and, and we do a lot of religious things. And we get carried away with the religious things. I've got to read my Bible. I've got to study. I've got to pray. And, and we make the object the most important thing of that we're trying to do instead of just simply saying to God, Here I am, Lord. Use me. I'm willing. I'm available. Put me where you want me to be to accomplish your purposes. Many, many years ago, I wanted to do something special for my wife on our 20th anniversary. And so, saved my shekels and decided we'd go on a little four-day cruise. We'd never been on a cruise. Her parents had been on cruises. They loved them, so we thought we would try them out. And so we went. We left from Tampa Bay, Florida. One thing I didn't remember, one thing that I didn't know was that we would have to share a table at dinner with total strangers. And that didn't set too well with me. You say, well, why is that? I said, well, things always go fine until it gets around to the table where everybody starts to tell you what they do for a living. Oh, I'm a doctor, I'm this, and I'm that. And, and, and then they say, and what do you do, sir? And as soon as I say, well, you know, I'm a pastor. It's like the air goes out of the room. It's like they get the idea, well, we can't have any fun now. We got a pastor with us. And that's exactly what happened on this cruise. We were sat at a table with uh, two other couples. They were from Texas, and things were going well, and then the question came out. What do you do for a living, Dave? I'm a pastor. Oh, you're one of those phonies. You're one of those guys on television that's always asking for money. You're a con man. I mean, they were brutal. Now, inside, I was boiling. And I wanted to lash out, and I wanted to say something, but I just kind of let it flow and hoped that once they got it all out of them that everything would change or whatever, and they didn't. Well, the next night when dinner time came, I did the old, you know, honey, I'm not feeling too good. Uh, why don't you just go by yourself? She said, no, I'm not going to go without you. And after all, if you go, if you don't go, you're going to let those guys win? And so I went. And so they began 
needling me and whatever. And so I did what only I thought I could do. I started telling pastor jokes. Tried to be as pleasant and as nice as I could, but couldn't wait till dinner was over. Well, on the last night of the cruise, I was waiting for Jill. I was out on the deck, and who comes around the corner but these two guys? And my first thoughts were, they were going to throw me overboard. But the one guy came up to me, and he said, you know what? He said, you're genuine. You're real. We did everything that we could to get you off because... We see all of this stuff and where we live in Dallas so many times. There's so many phonies that are on there. And he says, I want to tell you something. He said, the reason that we're on this cruise, he says, that my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And the prognosis is not good. And he says, and then we get seated at a table with a pastor. But he says, I found out something. You're a real person. And I looked at him and I said, well, you know, it's because I've got Christ in me. And I said, he can make the change in you too. Now, he didn't get saved. I don't know what happened to them. But he asked me, would you pray for me and my wife as we go through this journey together? And I said, yeah. Now, I never would have met those people. I probably would have had a terrible testimony. But my wife reminded me that we represented God at that table. And we needed to show what kind of God he was and what he's done for us. Well, we're personal representatives of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It may be on your job. It may be in the neighborhood, at your school. And I know we're working remotely now, but we still have contact with people. And people are always saying, wow, what are we going to do about this? And it gives us the opportunity to say, well, I'm trusting in my God to see me through. And let me tell you what he's done for me. Keep that in mind. Be convinced of the reality of God and then be convinced that you are his representative and that you're available when he calls you to speak. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to just be a representative of you, to Share the love of Jesus Christ with people who are looking for answers. In Christ's name we pray.